So we'll begin our next unit of study in geometry here in chapter 3, talking about lines and angles. Now, from the space shape that is shown here, a rectangular prism, we're going to be talking about these three terms. First is parallel lines. Parallel lines are coplanar lines that do not intersect. So take two lines that are in the same plane, such as line CD and line HG, they do not intersect, they are parallel. Also, CD, AB, or even CD and EF with the cross-cut plane that would go through the middle of this prism. So, that's our beginning concept here. We'll be talking a lot about parallel lines in this unit of study. Next, we have parallel planes. These are planes that do not intersect similar to parallel lines, just put out to a two-dimensional system instead of one. So the top plane, CDGH, and the bottom plane, ABFE, would be co uh, parallel planes. Now skew lines would be non-coplanar lines that do not intersect. So again, going for an example here, if we took CD and FG, these do not exist in the same plane, and there is no time that they would ever intersect one another. So this becomes the basis of the items that we're going to be talking about in this unit. Along with working with these, we're also going to be working with items, other types of lines that would come into play. So let's begin looking at those. When we have two lines, such as the two black lines here, which I am going to call... A and B, if these two lines are crossed by another, and we'll call it M, then the line that cuts across the other two is called a transversal line. And when the transversal intersects these other lines, it has to be at unique or distinct points. Next, we start talking about interior angles. Now, interior means inside. So when we have the two lines and the transversal, anything that is on the inside, such as 3 and 4, or 5 and 6, become interior angles. And then to counter our interior angles, exterior angles are those that would fall on the outside, such as 1 and 2, 7 and 8. Now many relationships exist with interior and exterior angles. And as we move forward in this unit of study, we will see a lot of those, especially when they come into play with parallel lines. So how, what other items can we come up with when we do start looking at this? So we have these four concepts at play. Alternate interior, same side interior, corresponding, and alternate exterior. So alternate interior by demonstration here, would be alternate, meaning on opposite sides, so they're on left and right, or then top and bottom of a transversal, and interior inside. So 4 and 6 would be considered alternate interior, as would angles 3 and 5. Same side interior, just as the name suggests, both fall on one side of the transversal and are inside the lines being crossed. So, three, angle 3 and angle 6 would be considered same side interior, as would angles 4 and 5. Now, corresponding angles are going to be a little bit different. Corresponding angles are on the same side of the transversal and same relative position to the lines being cut. So for angle 1, it is to the left of the transversal and above its cut line. So on the other cut line, what is above and to the left, and that is angle 5. In this diagram, we're going to have four sets of corresponding angles. So we'll begin with 1 and 5. Just to the right of those, we will have 2 and 6. Next, we would have angles 3 and 7. And last comes in angles 4 and 8. And again, these are corresponding because they fall in 
on the same side of the transversal and in the same relative position on their own line being cut. Last up comes alternate exterior angles. Similar in concept to the alternate interior, these have to be on opposite sides of the transversal, but then outside of the angles, uh, lines being cut. So we would have angles 1 and 7, as well as angles 2 and 8. And again, these will come up often as we move through, and even more things special about them when we begin looking at parallel lines. So how do all these angles start coming into practice when we are looking at a real object rather than at simply a drawing on a paper? So let's take a look at a real diagram. So here we have the front picture of a house. And as we look, there are many lines going into effect here. But what are some of the ones that we have talked about? So let's take the roof line and the base of that roof line as being our main set of lines. Then let's begin looking at the awning covering here as being our transversal. As you can see, we have a lot of angles that showed up all of a sudden. We have angles 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And the symmetry that is involved with this is what gives the house an aesthetic appeal. It's pleasing to look at. So what types of angles do we see? Well, angles 1 and 3 are vertical as are 2 and 4, 5 and 7, 6 and 8. Angles 1 and 5 are corresponding. So are 2 and 6, 3 and 7, 4 and 8. 1 and 7 again are alternate exterior, so are 2 and 8. 3 and 5 are alternate interior, so are 4 and 6. Then 4 and 5 are our same side interior, 3 and 6 are as well. So we're going to be taking these base ideas, as I've said several times in here, and moving forward and putting them into effect with parallel lines and other such situations. So make sure you have these definitions down because they're going to be key concepts as we move forward.